And now I can officially welcome each and every one of you for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. I'm your host, Evangelist Anita Rivera. It is July 10th, 2023. And uh, what I have to share with you all tonight really uh, just drives so much home on, on, on what I've been talking to you about for the past few years. And I'm talking about extreme weather events. Things have gotten completely erratic when it comes to the weather patterns around the globe. And listen, it's not like we've never seen, uh, you know, weather. <laughs> it's not like we've never seen uh, rain and flooding. It's, it's, it's bad at times, yes. It, that's what I'm saying. It's not like we've never seen or heard about the bad things that have happened when it comes to weather events, but things are ramping up. And it is becoming um, erratic on a level that is really scary. A lot of climatologists, scientists, researchers, and I, you know, it's it's almost as if, you know, I, you know, we know that they've really been trying to figure things out and, and, and trying to find a way to calm, you know, Earth's situation with the weather. Uh, but it's almost like they're at a point of panic, if you will. You know, you got reports stating, well, you know, we're going to try to block the sun so that the heat will be going somewhere else outside of our solar system or just somewhere outside of our planet, I should say, rather than to us. And that would help bring the planet's temperature to a cooling stage and, and that would help our situation with global warming. And that is a catastrophe waiting to happen. That is a recipe for catastrophe that would, without a shadow of a doubt, accelerate things on a level that the world has yet to see because the planet is erratic for a reason. Weather is erratic for a reason. It's not for nothing. Understand that we're living in the last days, that the Bible has something to say about weather patterns in the end times. As a matter of fact, I want to share with you a portion of scripture. There's going to be several throughout today's broadcast, but let's start off with a particular word from Jesus Christ Recorded for us in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25, uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 24. And it says the following. It says here, uh, oh gosh, I, I don't want to miss my part here. It says here in, in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 20, no, this is not the portion, hold on. It's in the Gospel of Luke, please forgive me. I got to make sure I'm giving it to you as I see it, okay? So the Gospel of Luke chapter 21. Yes, here it is. Thank you, Lord. It says here in verse 25, referencing the coming of the Son of Man. It says the following. It says, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth a distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And then it says the following, Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken and then it says in verse 27 then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory all right now what is happening I, I, again the planet is reeling to and fro like a drunkard for a reason. It knows, I'm talking about Earth, the planet Earth knows that we're living in the last days. It is in labor pains. It is laboring for the revealing of the sons of God. It proves it here in the book of Romans. I think it is very important that we understand that the world is doing this on it's it, it's doing it for a reason and dare i say purposefully it's on purpose because it is well it says here the following let me read it to you romans chapter 8 verse 20 says the following for the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly but because of him talking about jesus who subjected it now in hope because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty 
of the children of God. Verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. That is a stunning portion of scripture. This really highlights, it really reveals to us why we're looking at extreme weather patterns, why mass animal deaths continue to happen around the world. There's been a massive die-off of sea lions and whales over in California, red tide, meaning the ocean, the water turning the color of blood red. I, I, I just gave you a list of mass animal deaths happening worldwide just a few broadcasts ago, probably two or three broadcasts ago. Not only that, uh, there, you know, there's been a severe bacterial thing happening over in Florida's waters. They just shut down the beaches over in the Northeast here in the United States. The U.S. is not the only country going through this. This is worldwide. Again, I just shared it with you that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. The planet is looking for its own redemption. The planet is looking for its own deliverance. And I know you have mankind, you have humans trying to do it in their own strength, in their, in their own power. But Jesus said that the flesh profits nothing. He said, it's my spirit that brings life. But see, we're living in the last days and not, everyone, not everybody wants to heed the words of Jesus Christ. The Bible even clearly states that People will give heed, meaning give their full attention, their, their, their specific dogmatic attention to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. They will turn their ears aside to fables from the truth because they have itching ears. They don't want to know about the truth about the word. They want to say, we can do this in our own power. We can fix it. We can fix this situation. Nothing wrong with wanting to fix this situation, but it has to be fixed right. And the only one that can fix the creation right is the creator. If, 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 you know, we have a lot of, uh, you know, creators, people who build things and make things and they create things all the time, brand new, never before seen things. And if the creation of this thing that people, you know, that a person built went haywire, you're not going to call anyone else other than the one who created it to fix it. And yet here we see a fertility happening. We see foolishness happening that we're calling on ourselves to fix the situation we're calling on man's agenda and now don't get me wrong you have others in in maybe some societies that are known as secret societies saying no 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 that's not true evangelist we're also calling on some deities we're also calling on some gods if you will we're calling on our own spiritual beings or spiritual guides and if anything we may have a new extraterrestrial species that is willing to help us out of our current situation willing to usher in a type of peace and safety that the world is yet to know that we've been vying for that we, you know, we deserve and is part of our evolution. You know nothing and neither does your old ancient Bible, your scriptures. Listen, you follow your own script, I'll follow mine. These are the scriptures I'm going to follow by the Spirit of God. And the Lord is, the, the planet is telling us what is clearly written in the scriptures that is crying out for redemption. And listen, mankind will not be able to save this planet. As a matter of fact, if the planet could speak, and it is speaking in its own language, if you will, it's saying, for the day of the Lord is at hand. If it, if it could bring forth a message of salvation, it would cry out for men to be saved, because the day of the Lord is at hand. You see, I don't know how much creation knows, but we know, according to the scriptures, that there will be a new heaven, and there will be a new earth. And the former things will truly pass away. Now, until that time, we're going to have to buckle our seatbelts. Until that time, we're really going to have to dig our heels in. We're, we're going to have to gird up our loins. We're going to have to wear the whole armor of God. And we're going to have to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand, because things are not going to backpedal. It's going to increase. So much so that the World Health Organization, the first article, the World Health Organization is now warning us of imminent extreme weather events. This coming out uh, from RT.com along with, actually it came out uh, over at a press, uh, a press briefing uh, with the World Health Organization themselves, Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus, if I mispronounce it, forgive me, Ghebreyesus, 
General Tedros Ghebreyesus has said climate change will drive a surge in extreme weather events in 2023 and pointed to record-breaking temperatures around the globe just this week alone. Speaking during a Wednesday pre uh, uh, speaking during a Wednesday press briefing just last Wednesday. Uh, General Tedro said that the climate crisis is now among the major factors determining human health outcomes, warning that global warming could ultimately produce a wave of hunger, migration, and disease. He went on to say, and I quote, over the coming months, we expect a range of extreme weather events, including droughts, floods, hurricanes, and heat waves, all of which harm human health, he said, also noting that Monday marked the hottest day on record, just last Monday, the hottest day on record, not in the Middle East, not in the Sahara Desert or in Death Valley, but around the globe. And the fact that last Monday marked the hottest day on record for average temperatures around the world should really, it, it needs, it, it is demanding our attention. Now, of course, Many will say for different reasons, but I, as a believer in Jesus Christ, as an evangelist, as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, this is demanding our attention to understand that we're living in the last days, to get our houses in order. Because again, the day of the Lord is at hand. Now, this general uh, over at the World Health Organization continues stating that a prolonged drought and heat wave over in the Horn of Africa has already had a major impact, putting great strain on local health care services. He went on to say, containing, uh, excuse me, containing Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya, Somalia, South Sudan, uh, Sudan as well, and Uganda, the region recently suffered its worst drought in decades, with nearly 60 million people now food insecure. Some countries have seen the highest level of severely malnutrition children in years, largely thanks to the famine, according to the World Health, according to the World Health Organization chief saying that while the drought in the region has given way to heavy rain and flooding, hunger levels are expected to remain very high. You also, now that's over and after, you may say, well, that, you know, that may be typical of angels. You're, you're making a, a, a mountain out of a molehill. You're, you're, you're making something bigger than what it is. All right. I live in Texas. I'm not the only one. People, locals from Texas, from the state of Texas here in the United States, all the way to the east, the continent of Asia, particularly China, and even Antarctica, down, down south of the equator, uh, of, 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 you know, you know, down, you know, south pole, you know, Antarctica, have also been in the grips of major heat waves. Now, Texas, okay, you're going to get some heat over in Texas, although it's been very unusual. This heat is coming with an unusual spirit. China, right? You know, China, they have uh, their own sun for crying out loud. They're creating their own sun. Maybe that's caused the heat to go up a little bit and maybe causing the earth to go in more of an erratic state than what it ought to be. But Antarctica is an issue. <laughs> when we're looking at reports coming out from Antarctica stating that they're going through a major heat wave, that's alarming. Antarctica has ice shelves that stabilize the water, fresh water, cold water, salt water, uh, to ensure that our levels uh, over at the oceans do not come over its banks and inundate cities and states. And now we're looking at ice shells, we're looking at possible glaciers, such as what they're calling the Doomsday Glaciers, known as Thwaites, to be in a type of collapse position, in a state of collapse possibly imminently and they're afraid to say it they're saying it they're sounding the alarm i gotta give them credit for that but they're freaked out because they're saying if these glaciers if these ice shelves continue to melt at the rate that they're melting the fact that antarctica is going through heat waves that it's being gripped by heat waves and these shelves melt these glaciers break off and they melt it will rise sea level water at minimum by two feet which would be catastrophic at most by 30. What in the world is that? From two feet to 30 feet? I mean, we're all going to be huddled in the middle of the planet, burnt up in the equator. <laughs> in all seriousness, it's very serious. And now we have El Nino type warm weather patterns. And listen, global, it's, it's happening globally. And people are crying out for help. Now, I got to give you some more reports. Japan, 
Japan, I don't know if you heard this report, Japan is being hammered by the heaviest uh, rain uh, fall ever. Not within the past year or, or, or you know, even the past decade or even the past 100 years, they're being hammered by the heaviest rain ever with thousands told that their lives are in danger amid deadly landslides and devastating floods. Amazing. That's over in Japan. And then we segue from Japan over to Vermont here in the United States. Vermont has been going through their own catastrophic flooding uh, that's already uh, killed a woman. Uh, there's been a state of emergency in Vermont and Massachusetts residents are also being rescued in very heavy catastrophic flooding because of the rains that have hit those areas. And many are asking the question, why are these days so deadly? I'll tell you why because we're living in the last days. Oh, we've been talking about the last days. My mom used to talk about it, my grandpa, my great, great grand uncle and my kitty cat from back in the day in my former life. And I heard it all before. I heard it all before that we've been living in the last days. You're just blowing smoke. This is not as bad as it seems. Yes, it is. And I'll tell you what, to scoff and mock at this emergency situation is actually part of Bible prophecy. Second Peter, Second Peter chapter three says in verse three, the following, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. And we're looking at catastrophic flooding situations in the last days that we're living in. Truly the prophet Isaiah is correct in his word where he says, declaring the end from the beginning. And what that means is that if you want to know what the end of a thing is going to look like, go to its original beginning. Go to the original, you know, go to the original you know, beginning of it, the source of it. What did it look like? So will the end shall be. Vermont is facing catastrophic flooding. Massachusetts, New York. In the midst of all this flooding, you have 42 million people just here in the United States alone going through a very oppressive feat. We're back over in the hundreds right now. It's 8.22 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm broadcasting live on July 10, 2023, and it is still 100 degrees. Normally, it's supposed to be cooling down here in the state of Texas, but it has not. It's unusual. Torrential rain leading from flooding to flooding over in the Northeast, being pummeled by heavy rains. Again, Japan going through it as well. And, 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 so, uh, uh, and also with regards to New York City, they're experiencing one in 1,000 year catastrophic flooding, trapping drivers and damaging roads. So they're saying, wait a minute, this, this is, this, this is, you know, maybe, you know, this is not as, you know, it's bad, but it won't, it's not going to be something we see more often. But they're saying, no, this is looking like it's going to be the new normal. All right. And if all that doesn't pique your interest, if all that doesn't make you quiver just a bit, enough to say, God help me. God help me not be afraid. What must I do to be saved, Jesus? If, it, if all that doesn't do it, let, let me share with you one more article before I get into specific portions of scriptures on what I've talked about so far. This coming in from uh, Michael Schneider over at endoftheamericandream.com, and it says the following. The earth is being cooked from above by our erratic sun, because the solar flares have been cannibalistic, is what they're calling it. Not my word, but theirs. Earth is being cooked from above by our erratic sun, and from below by seismic activity in the oceans. It truly is a portion of scripture that I'm going to share with you here in a moment. Let me read to you the article. And it says the following. There is a rational explanation for the crazy things that we're witnessing. Over the past few years, weather patterns have gone completely nuts all over the globe. And mainstream media insists that they can explain exactly why this is happening. 
But the truth is that they really can't. When you take a close look at the models that they're using, you quickly discover that they are fundamentally flawed. Throughout human history, the climate has always been changing and human activity has had very, very little to do with it. And in recent years, we've seen record-setting cold, unprecedented flooding and horrific droughts. But right now, what we're witnessing is this tremendous heat. And that's because we're being cooked from above by our erratic sun and we're being cooked from below by seismic activity in the oceans. Hopefully by the time you're done hearing this particular report, you'll understand why this is even being mentioned. Earlier this week, news outlets all over the globe breathlessly reported that we had just experienced the hottest day ever recorded. That report came in as follows. The hottest day ever on earth since records began happened on July 3rd, 2023. The average global temperature reached 62.62 .62 degrees Fahrenheit. The average global air temperature was recorded two meters above the Earth's surface with the data compiled by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, also known as NOAA, and the University of Maine. And then we were told that Tuesday and Wednesday were even hotter. Earth's average temperature remained at a record high Wednesday after two days in which the planet reached unofficial records. And the latest marker in a series of climate changing driven extremes. Friends, the average global temperature was 62.9 degrees according to the University of Maine's Climate Reanalyzer, which is a, a tool that uses satellite data and computer simulations to measure the world's condition. That matched a record set Tuesday and came after a previous record of 62.6 .6 degrees that was set on Monday. Now, here in the United States, we're seeing some absolutely crazy high temperatures. For instance, we're being told that high temperatures in Phoenix will be above 115 degrees all of this week and possibly into next. And I'll have to add something else. That was in one report that they will be seeing above 115. There was another report that they could be seeing 125 plus. I mean, that's devastating. You're being cooked alive. That report said the temperature hit 108 degrees on Wednesday afternoon over in Phoenix last week, and it might be the lowest high for at least the next week. An excessive heat warning that initially was set to expire Wednesday night was extended to Friday night and now could go even longer with temperatures expected to rise higher than 115 degrees all of next week. Meanwhile, we're seeing tremendous heat waves in our oceans. Roughly 40% of the world's oceans are now experiencing marine heat waves. You heard me correctly. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Marine heat waves. They're saying that this is the most since satellite tracking started back in 1991, according to the National Oceanic, excuse me, according to the National Oceanographic and, and Atmospheric Administration. They're also saying that by September, that number is projected to climb to 50%, which is a number that is really scary. This is according to Dylan Amaya, who is a research scientist with NOAA's Physical Sciences Laboratory. This is alarming. This, again, demands our attention. There are even some areas in the Atlantic Ocean where water temperatures have actually been nine degrees warmer than normal. Nine degrees, that's excessive. That's dangerous. Now, of course, you have many saying, why is all this happening? I did already start off with responding to that, but let me add some more according to the report. When sunspot activity is very low, global temperatures tend to be lower. And when sunspot activity is very high, you have global temperatures tending to be high. Well, in recent months, sunspot activity has been rising to an exponential rate. I'm going to say not only an alarming rate, but deathly a rate. The following uh, is going to come from the Royal Observatory of Belgium Solar Influences Data Analysis Center. Allow me to share it with you. We have international sunspots that were seen with a 13-year forecast. And from the year 2012, sunspot numbers were around the 25 mark, and now it's exceeded to well over 230. It's going up to 250, friends. 
And that could happen within the next six months. Right now, we've been holding steady at well around 200. Sunspot number. Where we originally started off in 25. Now, of course, we hope that the sunspot activity will start to level off soon. But if it doesn't, we're going to have a real problem on our hands. Our sun is becoming increasingly erratic. In fact, it's being reported that back-to-back -back solar flares were just released by the sun yet again. That report. Back-to-back -back solar flares, including one on the 4th of July, created solar weather storms resulting in brighter auroras and potential power grid fluctuations. While neighbors were preparing to put on firework shows Tuesday evening, the sun was ejecting a powerful burst of energy, putting on its own show. Now, at, in the midst of all of this happening, seismic activity on our ocean floors continued to rise. Back in March, scientists discovered a sprawling field of hydrothermal vents. This on the floor of the Atlantic Ocean, and some of these vents are releasing material hot enough to even melt lead. On March 12th, a team of scientists gathered in the control room of the RV Falker, an oceanographic research vessel operated by the Schmidt Ocean Institute. They watched the monitor of a camera welding underwater drone, or what is known as an ROV, as it explored the deep sea over 6,600 feet below the ship. And when the screen showed a plume of black smoke, uh, you know, when they, excuse me, when the screen showed a plume of black smoke, the scientists all cheered. Now, the video showed a sprawling field of hydrothermal vents, fissures in the seabed will, where sea water mixes with magma. On the Puy des Folas volcano on the Mid Atlantic Range is where all this took place. Some of the vents, known as black smokers, had formed tall chimneys of iron sulfide deposits that gushed out dark sephorous plumes with temperatures up to about 340 degrees Celsius or 644 degrees Fahrenheit, again, hot enough to melt lead. Now, that's over in the Atlantic. We're maybe thinking the Pacific may be all right. Maybe we're safe because the Pacific is not going through its own extremities. On the contrary, in the Pacific Ocean, similar things are also happening. Scientists have discovered a gigantic hole 50 miles off the coast of Oregon that is spewing hot liquid into the Pacific Ocean like a fire hose as we speak. That report. It says here experts are on high alert amid fears a crack at the bottom of the ocean could trigger an apocalyptic earthquake. The hole just 50 miles off the coast of the United States of Oregon, off the United States uh, being Oregon, of the United States, I don't want to get it confused, the state of Oregon, <laughs> is spewing hot liquid that scientists warn could spark a magnitude 9 earthquake with the potential to devastate the West Coast. This is it. We've been talking about this particular seismic activity for at least the last five years, and now we're seeing activity that they're calling apocalyptic. This is dangerous. And this is why ocean temperatures are suddenly risen so much. If our oceans continue to heat up, you're going to have millions upon millions more fish, more sea life at risk. The waters will continue to turn the color of red, blood red, if you will, because oxygen levels will be depleted and ocean life, again, will cease to exist. Our ocean floors are much closer to the core of the earth, by the way, than we are. And it, obviously, it, it is, you know, we can say that, you know, we can believe that something very unusual is also happening down there, especially since the Earth's core stopped a few months ago, according to scientists, and could be on a reversal mode. That alone may cause a, uh, what do they call it, a um, uh, Earth access shift? There's a term for it. it. It slips me, but I know some of you are mouthing it to me more than likely right now. It's, it would be a reversal of the Earth's poles. North becomes south, south becomes north. And all of this would be, we would see people going completely nuts. Many people, though, are in the dark about it, or they don't care about it. They're saying, listen, as long as our days continue to be, I'm not, I'm not really concerned about it. But I think it needs to get our attention. It's not, it's not a matter of us being worried. I, 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 I want to make sure I'm saying this correctly. 
It's not a matter, it, 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 it's not about us living in fear. This is not what the point of all this is. This is about understanding how late the hour is. God, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And if people who've, who have not surrendered their life to Jesus, who are risking it, they're all in. They're putting all the chips on the table without any safety net. Because they're saying, well, everything will just be just fine. Any problems that we have are just temporary and they'll go away. I'm willing to bet on it. I'm willing to bet my life on it. And you have people stating this, believing it in their heart. And, and God's going to call their bluff. And listen, you don't want, look, we don't want anyone else to call our bluff. But when you have the Almighty, we don't want, you don't want the Almighty doing that. So let's, let's play it smart. Let's, let's be, let's, in, in this matter, yes, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Because per, his perfect love has cast out fear. So it's not about us walking fearful in a spirit of fear, but it is about us having the fear of the Lord. And there's a, a genuine difference. This, you know, a spirit of fear is living in torment living in continued anxiety, literally being tormented by a spirit that seeks to wear you out, go and, you know, literally run through you and cause a perpetual state of panic. That's not God. Again, that's what God has cast out by his perfect love. And yet we can't say, well, I'll just be fearless. No, no, no. It's no different than saying, well, you know, Jesus came and now I don't have to obey the Ten Commandments. People speak foolishly. And this is being taught in a lot of churches. Well, now that Jesus came, we don't have to follow the Ten Commandments. You can't be lawless because that you, when, when, when you say that, you're saying we could just become lawless. It's not about being lawless. We have to understand that Jesus is a very fulfillment of the law. Um, and when we become born again, when, when we have the Holy Spirit, by default, that law has already been fulfilled. The law of the Ten Commandments have already, have already been fulfilled by Jesus. And yet, we can't boast or speak foolishly and say, well, because of what Jesus said, I don't have to follow the law. We have to understand that there's a portion of Scripture in the book of Romans that the Apostle Paul, being inspired by the Holy Spirit, said very specifically in Romans chapter 7, he said, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. And what that means is that we're no longer under the law of sin and death, which can bring that spirit of fear. It can bring curses. The law of sin and death is a very serious death law. <laughs> and that comes, the law of sin and death comes when if you break one of God's holy commandments, you broke them all. And God actually details what the curses of the law is as recorded in the book of Deuteronomy. And then he actually details for us what the blessings are if the law is followed also in the book of Deuteronomy. And the curses are very severe. If you break one, you break them all. And it was impossible for man to keep. This is why they had to bring forth the shedding of the blood of bulls and goats every year, yearly sacrifice uh, to a temple that was made uh, as ordered by, by the Lord God until... The fullness of time came when Jesus, being the very Lamb of God, was to be slain from the foundation of the world. Behold, the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world, according to the Gospel of John. Behold, the Lamb of God that has come to take away the sin of the world. And now, because Jesus came in the fullness of time, being the very propitiation of the sin of all mankind, he took upon the sin of you and me. He took upon the sin of all mankind. So that whosoever shall believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Because God did not send his son Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Because you, to be condemned by God is death. And it's not just a one-time death. It's a death that, it's, it's, it's a condemning death. It's, it's, a very, it's very bad. So, Jesus, so, so, so God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. So now we can be saved. Now we can place our faith, our, our life in him. We're not just keeping Jesus as a lucky rabbit's foot on our keychain just in case, but I'm going to do my own thing until I need you. 
He's not a scratch off lottery ticket. He's not our one nine hundred psychic hotline number whenever we need uh, a prayer answered or our debts paid off. Jesus is God, and Jesus is very clear that He came into the world to do what only He can do to save mankind, and it is our privilege to now give our life to Jesus so that he can make us what's called born again by the power of his Holy Spirit. And now we walk in newness of life. Now the law is fulfilled in us by the spirit of life. This is what it says in the book of Romans. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I say all that because just as I said, you know, a moment ago, you know, we, 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 you know, we have to get our houses in order. And these people are, you know, they can't, they can't try to fix the planet outside of Jesus, outside of the Creator. The Creator knows how to fix things, or, and, or in this case, He's going to tell us it's not about fixing as much as it is now becoming new. Even the earth is crying out to be redeemed. Even the earth is crying out to be delivered. And, 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 and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. The question is, will you be part of it? Oh, I was saying something about fear. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. With her, I use the law as an example. You can't be lawless. You can't say, well, I don't need to follow the 10 because now I'm, I'm, I got Jesus. That's not the way it goes. The law is fulfilled in you because of what Jesus did. Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has now made you free from the law of sin and death. One law was fulfilled and now it's not an empty void. If there's a void, you have an issue. You're going to have that demon that was harassing you come back with seven more stronger than he. Now they could set up shop and never leave you. You got to have one law to take over or to bring forth a, co a confirmation of completion of the law, which was the holy one. Do you understand? No different than fear. I could sit here and tell you, don't fear. Yes, things are getting bad. We're living in the last days. It's very serious. But don't be afraid. Don't be. No, I'm going to tell you. If, if, if fear brings you to Jesus, then, you know, use it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to sound like uh, maybe a little crazy, but I have to speak a truth here. When I gave my life to Jesus, I was in fear. That's, I know that's all I know. When I gave my life to Jesus, the spirit of fear had me in a stronghold. I was in bondage to a spirit of fear. I was afraid of everything. And it wasn't a, like a, a, a fear that I was trying to be cute in. I was in bondage to a spirit of fear. This demon had a hold on me. It would literally go in me, operate in me, bring panic upon me. And then literally I could feel its presence leave my body. And I would be exhausted and have to knock out for a couple of hours just to regain strength again for it to happen all over again. And that went on for seven years. I had fear when the morning came and I was hoping that it would be nighttime. And when nighttime came, I would be fearful, hoping that it would be daytime. I was under the curse of the law and I, would, I didn't know nothing about that. All I know is that I, 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 when I look back now, I can say, of course, I was unsaved. I was in sin. And as the days continue, as the fact that we're, you know, with the fact that we're living in the last days and things are not going to uh, go back as if, um, you know, it never happened, it's happening. So now we have to be smart. We're not full. Come on, guys. Are we really dumb? Do we have to walk around and say, well, I didn't know. I don't know what to do. Uh, you know, and then be mad at God. Be offended at God like, like we created him. You should have known better, God. How come you got? No, 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 no. God is holy. And he made a way for us to be saved. And it is, we become foolish when we don't receive that gift of salvation, when we don't receive the way to be saved. Now that's foolish. The devil's hoping you take that route. The devil is hoping, because the devil is real. He's defeated, but he's real. The devil is hoping that you take the route of just doing it in your own self. Using Jesus as a lucky rabbit's foot. Taking it upon yourself to save yourself or just believing that God is such a good God. He'll just forgive you if he's real. No, no, no. But that's what the devil's hoping. The devil's hoping that you have that mindset and you stay in that mindset until the, until the day. But you're made in the image of God. And God says to you right now, Behold, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And then he says, Choose life so that you and your descendants may live. You could be the key. You could be the beginning of the end of generational curses in your life. You could be the one that God uses to bring forth a salvation to, to your entire family. And it requires simple faith, faith, child, childlike faith. 
It requires you to surrender your life to Jesus Christ so that you can be saved. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you don't allow the fear of the Lord to take a hold of you before the spirit of fear does, you could be living a carefree life, a fearless life. When all hell breaks loose on, when all hell breaks loose on this planet, make no mistake about it, the spirit of fear will cling on to you out of fear of God and will drown you in the flood, if you will, in the fire, whatever it is, will drown you in a, in a, in a futile attempt to try to save itself because it knows that its time will be up, that it will be going to perdition. Why go through that? Why be a holding cell for the spirit of fear when all hell breaks loose on this planet? Because I just shared it with you in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, where it says that fearful sights will take place. It says it here. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, a distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. People will literally fall out. They will die out of fear. Because of what will be taken, because what will, not only what will be happening, but the expectation, the very thought of the next wave coming of this catastrophe of whatever's happening, whatever catastrophic thing is happening on the planet. Because it will be one right after the other, right after the other, labor pains. I'm a mother of six children. I know what they are and I know what they feel like and I know how they increase in intensity. I know how it starts. I know how the next one comes and I know how the body readies itself for the next one to arrive and I know how it goes from going from one from from being five minutes long down to four minutes down to two minutes down to now seconds no different men's hearts will fail them from fear for the things that will be coming upon the earth and the expectation of those things because the powers of the heavens will be shaken and God says do not don't wait till that time to say God now save me God now I believe don't wait till that time to fear the Lord because the spirit of fear will take you out before that time. The spirit of fear already has a number on you. The kingdom of darkness is already big. Please understand the kingdom of darkness is, has already been waging on you. It's already been making bets on the people on this planet that, that do not have the fear of the Lord. You, you, you are already up for number. You, you already are, you, you're already tagged in the spirit to, you know, for the spirit of fear and other other strong man spirits that take a hold of you on this day because they have yet to see that you're covered by the blood of Jesus. And to you, you're free. It's free game. It's on for them. But you're not free game for them. You're not brought into this planet for the, for, for the kingdom of darkness. I need you to, there is no middle ground. You were brought into this planet because you had a purpose that God endowed you. Endowed, he gave to you. You were born for him. You weren't born for yourself. You weren't born for your career. And not reality, you weren't born for your parents. You were born for God's glory. So you cannot allow the kingdom of darkness to put itself in a position of, you know, you being available. Because there is no middle ground. And the kingdom of darkness knows this. Satan knows this. The devil knows this. God knows this. Do you? The only one out in the dark is you. Turn the light on. Let the light come into your dark state and illuminate itself before you bring forth the spirit of truth to lead you and guide you into all truth. Because again, the day of the Lord is at hand. Now please allow me to end the broadcast with the following portion of scripture. As I shared that one article, the very last article with you, uh, concerning the earth being cooked from above by our erratic sun and from below by seismic activity in the oceans. Let the fear of the, listen, when you have the fear of the Lord, the spirit of fear has no more grip on you, has no authority over you, has no stay over you, because now you walk in the fear of the Lord. You have the fear of the Lord, which is a spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit. The book of Isaiah, I believe chapter 61, talks about the seven spirits of God. The book of Revelation echoes the words found in the book of Isaiah with regards to the seven spirits of God. And one of those spirits by the Holy Spirit is the fear of the Lord. When you don't have a greater spirit, a stronger man, if you will, to overtake the strong man that seeks to live in you, to set up shop in you, make its home in you, well then that strong man, which will be the, the spirit of fear that God has not allowed in your life. He's telling you that he's, he's not allowed that. 
God has not given you a spirit of fear. But if you do not have the fear of the Lord to ensure that that doesn't come your way, then it's going to seek to set up shop. And you don't want to wait to that last time. You need the fear of the Lord. When you have the fear of the Lord, the spirit of fear will have no authority, will not have any dominion over you. It will not live in you because God lives there. Do you understand? And God is love. And God's perfect love cast out all fear. God's perfect love cast out fear. All right, Second Peter. Let me end the broadcast with this. Second Peter, chapter two. Duh, I apologize. Second Peter, chapter three. Let me read it in context. I did read a portion of it a few minutes ago, but let me read it in context, please. Second Peter, chapter three, verse one. Beloved, I now write to you the second epistle, both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder. That you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with the great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promises, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Amen and amen. All the day that will be. The day that it will be that we will see the new heaven and the new earth. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. As this earth is being cooked from above by our erratic sun and from below by seismic activity in the oceans is going through birth pains and is waiting to be new. And then there'll be a great wedding feast, the wedding supper of the lamb. And I'm looking forward to that. The new Jerusalem being the bride. That's what it says in the book of Revelation. The city brought down from heaven from God to the sun. There is coming that day very soon, my friends. So don't let any of this move you as if there's no hope. As things continue to heat up, if you will, on the planet, we clearly have to sound the alarm here at Open Your Eyes People and Emoaf Church. And we will continue to do that as the Lord allows us It is my prayer that you walk circumspectly in these last days, redeeming the time, knowing that the days are evil. It's my earnest prayer that you surrender your life to Jesus if you've yet to do so. That you walk wisely, redeeming the time, knowing that the days are evil. That you walk wisely. That if anything is weak in you that you allow God to strengthen it by surrendering it to him by inviting 
him into your weakness. Don't be afraid to do that. So many people are afraid to invite God into their weakness, thinking that God will, you know, make, you know, maybe shame them. But it's not God shaming you. It's that weakness that seeks to shame you. It's that weakness that seeks to have you keep it in that dark place, in secret, because it's afraid that once you invite God into it, it will no longer have a hold on you. So it gives the impression, it, it puts out false emotions, false beliefs, false ideas and thoughts that, ooh, if you tell God, if you invite God in, in, this, in me, in this weakness, then, he, you know, you're going to, you know, look how, you know, let me tell you how you're going to feel. And it brings forth a, a pseudo shame, but it's, it's false. It's, it, it's, it's, it's counterfeit. Oh, but it seems so real, but it's not. When you know the truth, truly the truth will set you free and it will keep you free, friend. You will, by the Spirit of God, know what the truth is so that a counterfeit will, know, will not have a hold on you. So that when you have a weakness, you're quick to surrender now rather than keep it just in case. There's no just in case in this. Allow the Spirit of God to take a hold of you. Invite Jesus to take a hold of your life. Invite Jesus to save you. Invite Jesus to make you born again. Invite Jesus to take over your entire life, your weaknesses, your strengths, the good, the bad, the ugly, your past, your present, your future, your hopes, your dreams, your fears. Invite him into all those areas of your life. And it is promised by the Spirit of God. You will not, you, you will not be the same ever again. You will be a whole new you. And everything will change. Everything will literally be made new. And you need that. Not, not, so, not for anything, for a promotion at work so that your boyfriend will like you. No, no. You need that so that you will not die in your sins, but you will live and you will thrive. And now you know what truth is for the first time. You know what love truly is. You know you have the anointing to really know everything wisely. Friends, thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to all the Word of God. World reports, obviously matching Bible prophecy. I want to invite you to learn more about me and my church ministry by logging on to my website at www.emof.org, E-M-O-A-F.org. While you are there, I want to uh, invite you also to uh, take a moment and, you know, donate towards the work of this church ministry. Your donations help make the work of this end time ministry possible, especially if you've been blessed by the work. If, if, if it's, you know, I want to say let it bless you. Let it make you happy to give. God does love a cheerful giver. So please take a moment. You can donate securely on my church website homepage at www.emof.org, E-M-O-A-F.org. Also, before I let you all go, if you or someone you know are in need of a letter of religious exemption, you can email me directly at anita at emof.org, A-N-I-T-A at E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. All right, friends, until the next broadcast report, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance unto you, and give you his perfect peace. God bless you. Bye-bye.